Hey everyone, so I'm going to be showing how to make um, like a Footman Frenzy map or kind of a Madness map that a lot of um, a lot of uh, maps have been like that on the Battle.net list, sort of where you, you have like one building and then you get a bunch of units on it um, that constantly spawn and then you can change what you're getting like um, Zealots versus Colossus or whatever. It's up, up to you to sort of choose that. So um, this is going to be a very simple tutorial in that regard, like I'm not going to make a full in-depth map. Um, um, so I don't have a demo in advance, I'm doing this completely on the spot, but uh, it's basically just going to be, you have a building, units spawn there, and you'll have a dialog window on your screen to uh, to choose what units to uh, to be spawning at your base, and and then I'll also have an order button, so like you can order all units to go to Northwest or something. Let's go File New. Um, okay, it's going to be super small for this test. And uh, right away, let's switch to the. Oh, I'm already on the units layer, so switch to the. And uh, before we place any units, let's go to map player properties and let's make player two, three, and four all users. And that's all I want to touch here. This is going to be a four player demo for this map. And um, so for player one, let's say that everybody. St oops, structure. Let's say that everybody starts with a nexus. Um, to defend. So we'll put one nexus here and press two, place one here, plus three, place one here, press four, place one here. And this is actually a hilariously small map, so uh, this will be a pretty weird example, but um, the, the goal is to show how simple it is to actually make one of these maps, which is probably why there's so many of them compared to tower defenses or other stuff. Um, so you got your starting building and let's go into triggers and just remove this starting stuff. And let's make a new action to pan the camera. I just want to get this out of the way for, well, let's do for player one to unit position of value, uh, choose that one, Q, OK, over zero seconds. And we'll pan the camera for player two. To, uh, and I can just actually go by this, by the player there. I don't actually have to choose it. For player three, let's pan it to this one. And for player four, let's pan it to that one. Okay, and let's save this. Um, friend, simple frenzy tutorial one, two. Okay, and um, I believe these maps always have camera visibility across the entire map. So I'm going to create a revealer, a uh, new action revealer, create a visibility revealer for player one in the function entire map. And copy that and do it for player two. And you could do this in a loop if you wanted it to be quicker. Um, but I just like to type it out since it's only four players. It's not that big of a deal. OK. So um, the basic idea is that you get a unit every so many seconds. So and keep in mind, I am not doing any balancing in this uh, in this tutorial. I'm just going to use units that are already in the game. And the data editor, you can you can make your own units and do whatever. The concept here is more about triggers and stuff, uh, because the data editor would take me forever to do stuff, and it'd be kind of boring because everybody has seen my other tutorials that do data editor stuff. So um, what we do need to have is a global variable. So right-click new variable here, and we'll call this player. Oops player units. So this will be the unit type that is spawning for each player. Um, and it's going to be an array of size 4 because we have 4 players. And you could make 4 separate variables for each one unit type variable for each player, but I'm just going to do it in one, in one variable with 4 size array. Just to make it simple. And uh, let's see what else. Uh, we'll make a new uh, variable. We'll call this um, units dialog and this will be a variable of type dialog and this will be I uh, know that'll just be one we don't need an array for that and uh, actually I'm going to do the ordering based on text so you can type um, if you type dash order left it'll make all you order top left it'll make all units go here or actually I don't know um, it might be good to have both. I mean, some people like to use hotkeys. Some people like to use buttons. So 
might be good to do both, but um, that's a lot of dialogues on your screen, so I'm thinking I'll just do dash L or dash W, L or something, and people can type them in, and their units will just automatically all order to a certain location. And um, I'm not going to be doing anything in the center. A lot of frenzy maps will have like something in the center that gives you a bonus or something, or a fountain of life that Warcraft 3 maps like Footman Frenzy I think had. I'm not going to do any of that. Um, you can you can do that pretty easily once you have this set up. Let's have a units dialog, and then copy paste, and then we'll have units dialog items, and these will be dialog items. And uh, let's say we'll have four choices. Okay, so back in here, let's make a new action dialog, create a dialog, non-modal, so it's, it doesn't take precedence or anything, it's just on your screen, of size uh, 200 and, I mean width 200 and height 400 will work, um, or maybe yeah, 500 at 0, 0 relative to the left, so I'm going to put on the left side, that's just... Uh, my preference here and uh, let's see copy paste and do variable set variable set um, unit dial units dialog to equal function last created dialog copy and paste the dialog thing and changes to be uh, I guess we got to find it to create dialog item button create a button for dialog last created dialog dimensions 150, 150, or height uh, 100, anchored to the top left of this dialog. Um, we're going to offset it by maybe 45. We'll have to play around with this later and offset from here. 50 is fine. Tool tip, no, button text. Here we go. Let's change the button text to be zealot. And actually, let's copy paste this, and let's set the title. Um, set dialog. It's got to be here somewhere. There it is. Set the dialog title of last created dialog to equal, and make sure you put this after you create the dialog. Um, to equal. Send units. You could change that, but I'm just gonna call it send units dialog. So create a button, and we need to do a variable set variable unit item dot item zero to equal function last created dialog item. And we're going to copy paste these both, and we'll change this to be uh, offset by 50 plus 100. So let's say 160. So the original one goes 100 down. Well, actually, hold on. This one starts at 50, and it goes to 150 uh, in the vertical direction. So this one's going to start at 160 and be 100 long as well. So it's going to be 10 offset by 10 from this one and uh, this one's going to be called marine and let's make this one copy paste these again and let's make one offset by 260 and let's say uh, what, should, what else can we train? Zergling? Gotta have Zergling in my tutorials it's not a tutorial if you don't have Zergling in it. Um, let's put two. And then the third one, set that to three. Don't forget to set these numbers increasing. Um, the third one will be offset 360. And this is the last one, actually. Um, and actually, this is the fourth one. But because I started counting from zero, it's three here. Um, what else is there? Now let's say a stalker. OK, so you have this. And last action we need to do is dialog s show slash hide dialog and we're gonna show last good dialog for all players and you could change this actually to active players so you don't show it for player zero neutral and st stuff or I mean so you don't show it for like player 12 13 11 etc that aren't even really in the game it's just it's just wasteful I think if you don't do that um, so we got that and we can start another trigger now which will be the periodic spawn. And okay. And so this is just going to be a timer periodic event. 
Um, I'm not sure what the standard timing is, but let's actually just leave it at five of real time. Um, you'll get a unit. So let's say player group. Uh, actually, let's do a unit group. So for each nexus, we'll uh, we'll create a unit. Pick each unit in units in region matching condition. Any units in the entire map owned by any player. And let's put required is a structure because you can never you can actually build in these games, so um, you can just require a structure. So it'll pick only these four. If you did have more buildings, you'd want to refine this and do like well actually I'll do it just to be safe so that you don't have to ask me about this. If you do have more buildings in your map, um, check that the unit unit type unit type of unit a unit type of picked unit equals equals to nexus there we go so it's going to it's only going to find structures and it's going to check that that structure is a nexus and if so so if it finds a nexus for a player it's going to unit create unit facing angle it's going to create one um well, actually, um, this so there's you got to think about your balance here because uh, spawning one zergling versus spawning one zealot is going to be kind of unbalanced. Um, so we could actually make unit counts, and actually we should do this, um, which is going to be integer. Um, you could balance every unit to be statistically the same, just like different values. Like one could be faster attacking, zergling could have more health. Um, but that's probably not fun for people who are used to StarCraft 2, where two Zerglings are equal to like, or three Zerglings or four is equal to one Zealot. So um, let's make a unit count. So make it as many units as you have in your map. So let's say we're going to have, well, we only have, I think, four. So I'll leave this at four. Um, keep in mind that this is four because there's four players, and this is four because you're choosing from four different units. Um, and then unit counts and unit types. And this is going to be four two. So in our actually in our initialize, initialization, the first actions we should do actually are variable set variable set unit count. Uh, oops, unit types zero to equal. Uh, oh my god, I forgot to just change this to unit type. Ah, there we go. Okay. Sorry, I left I left this trigger kind of empty right now, but. We'll just set these quickly. Set unit type 0 to equal, uh, what was the first one? Zealot. Set unit types 1 to equal Marine. What's the next one? Zergling Stalker. Unit types 2 to equal Z Zergling. And unit types 3. And you could obviously, um, you could obviously, uh, Increase the size of these and add in, and then add more. Uh, increase the size of this array too. Add more buttons for different stuff to spawn or stuff like that. Make the buttons smaller so you can fit more in. Um, the reason I'm choosing a dialog over a lot of maps will have a thing at the top where you choose your units with a little guy that you walk over a circle. Uh, the reason I'm not doing that is so you don't have to actually pan your camera all the way there. You can just click on your screen and bam, you're done. Um, but if you do have a lot of different choices, this could get. Um, you would need like a scroll bar or some, or a pull down list or something. Um, a pull down list is actually a type of dialogue item, which brings down a list. And you could, I could have done that actually, but uh, in this case, I'm just going to use buttons. Uh, okay. And so let's see. Uh, create one. Um, oops, I'm back in here. So we've set that. We've set the unit types the possible types and let's set the unit counts for each one. So for unit counts for Zella it's gonna give you one. Unit counts one. For uh marine it's gonna give you two. And I'm not sure what the exact balance is here, but I'm gonna give you four Zerglings. Maybe three would be more appropriate, but it takes some testing and balance to figure that out. And one stalker is the amount you'll get. So back in here we're gonna create instead of just creating one every time we're gonna create unit counts um, oh, and now this brings me to my next thing, which means we have to store um, player choice as an integer. For each player, we have to store what their choice is, whether on Zergling or Marine. 